Are you still using tube amps when the world is telling you to go modelers? I think we can agree that modelers give some great advantages and have some disadvantages compared to tube amps. So here are my three tips on how to make tube amp life a little better and a little easier. there's no secret that most of our guitar amps are turning into modelers and that's what most venues are pushing for. Now this isn't a video of talking about which is better, modelers or tube amps. Most bars, churches, and touring acts still choose to go modelers over tube amps for so many different reasons. Tip number one, wait. If someone really loves modeling, usually the first thing they say and gloat about is how easy it is to go into a gig or a space without carrying a large tube amp. And admittedly, that's probably the worst part for me as well. Tube amps can range from maybe 10 pounds on the extreme light to maybe 50 or 60 on the heavy side. Maybe Voxes, AC-15s, AC-30s with 212 speakers inside the cab, which can get extremely heavy. The amp that I have right now is a two rock traditional clean combo. It weighs 55 pounds. So anytime I would go to a gig or a space to play, it was definitely a workout taking my amp in. So what can we do about it? You could hit the gym, go get ripped and just work out more. That sounds awful. So let's go with a dolly. So a dolly is just a nice, easy cart with two, four, six wheels that can just help you carry or bring in your amp super easily. The cool thing is you can toss on your pedal board most of the time as well and your guitar and it makes it such an easy load in process. So I went on to Amazon real quick, just typed in dolly cart. Here's the first page. There's a bunch of different options, some without handles. I would recommend just getting one with handles, makes it a lot easier to pull. Um, maybe get one with a little bigger wheels as well. So I have three options up here that look pretty great. Um, the capacity is pretty wild, 275 pounds. So if you're carrying an amp like that, uh, it must be a Marshall full stack at least or something like that. I would say get something with bigger wheels that helps go over rocks, all that kind of stuff, just a little bit easier. Another one that looked really great was this one right here, folds up into a super small space it looks like. You know, just don't skimp on the wheels. Wheels are everything. This one has six wheels, looks really smooth um, and it looks like it folds up into a nice, really clean look that you could just toss anywhere on the back of the wall. Just get a dolly. Don't be ashamed, work smarter, not harder. Tip number two, volume. This is undoubtedly the best and worst part about being a guitarist who uses the tube amp. We all know that if you turn up your amp, you're gonna get awesome sounds. You feel the air moving and it's just really responsive and just how it was really meant to be. Unfortunately, most places don't even let us run our amps at a reasonable volume. They're usually turned down so low and in some cases don't even allow an amp on stage like churches or really, really small venues. So where I would start for this issue is a little tricky because there's so many different avenues you can go to kind of fix this issue. Number one, if you don't wanna change anything about your setup, I would get an attenuator. So what an attenuator does is it just takes down our volume without necessarily changing the tone, depending on the attenuator. And that just brings our volume down, having the same response, all that kind of stuff without affecting the tone too much. The one that I recommend is the Tone King Iron Man 2. Now there are two versions of this. The Iron Man 2 big version is really expensive, coming in at $795 as of recording this video. They have a mini version for just a little less, which is awesome as well. I personally played these and I do like them the most out of any attenuator I've tried, including the Aux and the Two Notes Captor X. Where I think this one stood apart is that whenever you had more overdrive or gainy sounds, it was definitely the less fizzy or not fizzy at all compared to the normal tone of the amp. Whereas with the Aux or the Two Notes, I felt that it was just reacting in a little different way. Still sounded great, but just not exactly what the amp was doing. A second way to go about the issue of stage volume is to find an amp with a great master volume. Some amps only come with one volume and that's kind of your volume mixed in with gain. The higher you push it, the more distortion you get. With a master volume amp, that means there are two volumes. The first one is a gain that sets your distortion, really affects the EQ, a master volume in theory should just control the volume or the loudness of the amp. Now, not all master volume amps are made equally. This is where doing a lot of research or going in and trying these in music stores will do the best for you. My favorite so far, of course, has been the Two Rock. They put a lot of pride and just care into 
that master volume component of their amps. Next up, I would say Dr. Z. They have some great master volume amps and he talks so much about that and he definitely puts a lot of care into that as well. I feel that having a good master volume amp really makes it enjoyable at home as well. If you're in an apartment like I am, this is really small, really tiny. I have to keep the volume extremely low and I usually play my amp lower than a talking volume and it still sounds great. Now, if you don't wanna go with a master volume amp, I would say get something like the Fender Princeton. It sounds incredible at all volumes. One, two, three, and four is getting into maybe a little gig volume, but it sounds so great and still remains pretty quiet. Tip number three, inconsistency. This is definitely somewhere where modelers have the edge up. You make a sound, you make a patch, and you save it. As long as you don't touch any knobs or change any parameters, that will be your sound, which is incredible, and that's what I think we want from our tube amps. Arguably, mic placement is one of the biggest components of tone. Moving your mic around just maybe an inch can make it so dark or so bright. So what I like to do to make it more consistent and just as close to a modeler situation as we can is to use masking tape and tape up where we need to place our mic. Now I recommend using masking tape or painter's tape because it won't leave a big residue like duct tape will or even gaff tape. And in the music world, gaff tape is everything. It's, it's incredible. But over time, it still leaves a residue even on cables. If you've taped down some cables with some gaff tape and came back a year later, it is just as gunky as duct tape. Gaff tape is really easy if you just need to do it for a one night gig and maybe just set it up right before you leave home. That's great. I haven't had any problems with residue on my grill cloth. Don't use duct tape. It'll probably never come off. So that's why I go with masking tape. There are so many great videos on YouTube talking about mic placement. I'll link one down in the description below so you can go check it out and learn from the professionals. So let me show you how I tape up my amp for consistent mic placement. Grab two pieces of masking tape make an L, whatever angle you wanna make right there. You just want your mic to sit right here in the space just so it's really easy for a sound guy or you to just toss on perfectly. Those are my three tips on how to make tube amp life a little better, a little easier, and more consistent. If you have any other tips, please leave them down in the comments and share the wisdom. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you in the next one. Yeah.